On this episode of Locked On Lightning, we discuss Ryan McDonough being traded, the the other moves the Lightning can make during the offseason this summer, and the Lightning finally make their first first round draft pick in a couple of years. We'll talk about that on today's episode, all that and more. But first, let's play that music. Your Locked On Lightning, your daily podcast on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome to another episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Adam Danker. This episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. On today's episode of Locked On Lightning, we'll be discussing Ryan McDonough being traded, moved down up to Nashville, excuse me, up to Nashville. What other moves the Tampa Bay Lightning can make in the coming weeks as the offseason progresses on? And finally, last but not least, the Lightning finally make a draft pick after going a couple of years without trading with with without having a first round draft pick due to trading away. Uh, their first rounders at the trade deadlines, which, you know, we could say it, it paid off. It resulted in two cups. It's fine. Uh, we talk about that uh, and, and what this this young gentleman, Isaac Howard, can bring to the mix here in Tampa. We talk about that. But first, I would like to thank everyone for making us your first listen of the day. If you're watching us on YouTube, thank you for making us your first watch of the day. So the Ryan McDonough trade. Now, if you just to summarize what exactly was given away and what was taken in return. So Tampa, the uh, earlier this week, traded Ryan McDonough to Nashville for Fleet Myers and great Grant Miss Mishmash. Uh, that's probably not how you pronounce it. But uh, this frees up a ton of cap room for Tampa. Uh, we all know that that Ryan McDonough was making a ton of money there, and and really, you know, y- you have to tip your cap to Julian Brees' boss and and say, you know, thank you, thank you, because really, what it came down to was that he had to make a decision that, uh, at least in my opinion, was not going to be popular with the Lightning faithful, and, and it, this this frees up a ton of cap room. Where I, I say that because uh, McDonough's cap hit would have been six point seven and a half. Uh, for this year and then going forward uh, till uh, 2026, the end of 2026. So that frees up about six and change for Tampa there. And, and really, you know, it, it's 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 sad. It, it really is sad as, as even though it, it's going to make it, it's going to make things easier, a lot easier for Tampa going forward. It's still bittersweet. You know, because Ryan McDonough, in my opinion, and, and some people might disagree with this. And, and just to kind of, you know, before I, I go into what he meant on the ice outside of the numbers, this is what his stats were with Tampa in the five years he was in the Sunshine State. Uh, 267 games played, 99 points, uh, plus minus of over 74, average 21 and a half minutes of ice time and and obviously those 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 um those numbers don't mean a lot you know in today's nhl especially because you know you're starting to see an evolution over the last couple of years of of offensive defensemen and and you really only see players like ryan mcdonough really flourish and really come to the national attention of the general hockey fan during the playoffs and, and, and you've seen the the effect that Ryan McDonough had on this team, especially during these two cup runs and, and even the third one where the Lightning were trying to go for their third and and really what he did for this team on the ice, uh, doing all the dirty things that really a lot of players in the NHL just can't do uh, 207 block shots with Tampa that is 430 over his career uh and and that was something that I spoke about during the course of the playoffs as well as the last couple of weeks where I said you know 
I, I really thought that is something that you don't see and you don't really, I mean, I mean, you get it from players, but you don't get a lot of players in the league that have that knack for clogging up the shooting lanes, uh, for knowing where and when to be at all times at, you know, moments in during <clears throat> during the course of a game, especially the NHL playoffs and, and really that veteran leadership uh is something that i felt that you really to me at least uh 6.7 and a half was worth it um and and you know now i'm not going to complain about it at this point you know the lightning did what they had to do i'm sure they're going to make more moves to to be able to to give themselves some sort of room going into the regular season and but i'm telling i'm not i'm not saying it like right away i'm not saying it you know down the road but there are going to be moments throughout the nhl season uh for the tampa bay lightning where where we will look back and maybe at certain points in playoffs where we will look at certain situations and say if only the lightning had Ryan McDonough right here, but it, it it does leave open the conversation, which I always love to have is potential moves. And, and a lot of you were a little, you know, and, and I was, I didn't really mean anything serious about this. This was just the conversation I had with a listener prior to the episode, but a lot of you were a little ticked off or almost calling blasphemy. My, I would say suggestion, but opening up the door to the conversation of there ever being a situation or an opportunity where the Tampa Bay Lightning may entertain the idea of trading Nikita Kucherov, which I I would just like to clear it up because there was a lot of feedback, not only on the YouTube page, but there was on Twitter as well. And, And I don't believe this will ever come to fruition. Um, you know, the wheels would really have to fall off for Tampa. Uh, sort of a situation, what we see with Chicago going on right now. And even then, I, I, I don't think that it would be de- it would be a decision that would be made lightly, regardless of where Kush is at is in his career. Um, he's a generational talent. He's one of the best offensive players and wingers of this era. Uh, The only issue and complaint I've ever had with him, even before the stuff in the playoffs and and then obviously in game six of the Stanley Cup final uh, with him, his body language. The only complaint I ever had with him was was just his inability to play a full season um, and and be on the ice consistently. Uh, But listen, this the the trade of McDonough, I I think if if you know, if we're not thinking with our hearts, we're thinking what our common sense, our hockey minds. This is a great deal. Um, I'm interested to see what Philippe Myers does, what what he could bring to the table, uh, whether it be at the AHL level uh, up in Syracuse or maybe as a guy throughout the season who is going to be able to step into a role and fill in when needed. Uh, or maybe eventually, if, if for whatever reason, there isn't a deal that could be worked out with, with Jan Ruda, maybe he makes a play in training camp for that last uh, third-line pairing. Uh, which right now I'm looking at daily face-off, their line combinations projected. Uh, they actually have, and, and I've been screaming his name for the last couple of episodes, uh, Cal Foot. Cal Foot's actually projected to be on the first line, which I don't know how to feel about that right now. I, I would prefer to have Zach Bogosian on that first line with Victor Hedman, uh, just because of the experience there. Um, I'd rather have foot on the third line, maybe alongside a Mikhail Sergachev. Uh, I still think, you know, Sergachev is a gr- is a very good defenseman. We kind of saw him sort of take a step back this year with his play. Uh, actually, the last two years, maybe one could make the case. Uh, yeah, he's, he has played very well. Uh, in the, He played very well in the playoffs in the bubble back in Edmonton in 2020, and that's what earned him that contract. But I, I think that he has really – he hasn't really grown as much as we really would have liked him to, uh, which is why I would like to see him on the third line with Cal foot. But listen, um, 
you know, it's going to be it's going to be a little bit of adjustment period for this team going forward, whether it be in training camp, whether it be in the beginning of the season. Uh, even like I said, maybe at certain points down the line during the season when guys are hitting the the IR uh, or or just you know the 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 injury reserve or whatever you want to call it, um, you're gonna want you're gonna miss moments when when you say, "Damn, I wish we had Ryan McDonough." But listen, uh, I I guarantee you he's gonna make a very big impact there up in Nashville. The guy is still 33 years old. Uh, his NHL career is not by any means over, um, but judge just from a hockey perspective, I, I think this is a good deal. I think this was the most Julian Brees Bloss could have gotten out of this deal, out of a defenseman who, yes, like I said, he's still very much young in terms of his life. He's only 33, uh, but at the same time, he uh, he has a lot of miles. Uh, he 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 does get hurt here and there. And that is very much due to his style of play. So there is that. But I, I wouldn't be surprised. Hopefully, down the line, sometime, somehow, you know, I, I've been talking about this all off season with Yanni Gord a little bit. But uh, hopefully, maybe down the line, who knows? Um, maybe we'll see Ryan McDonough once again at some point in Lightning Blue. So uh, we'll keep continuing to talk about potential moves that the Lightning could be making. Now that the first round, I'm recording this right after the N- the first round of the NHL draft has uh, concluded. And uh, now we kind of start, start to see a little bit uh, of a clearer picture as to what might the Lightning need uh, going forward in the coming weeks and, and especially the NHL draft. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, but first, I want to talk about our sponsor of the day, and that is betonline.net, Online. Dot net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball. BetOnline.net is fastest and easiest way to check on all your favorite sports events and MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn about more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. Uh, I'd just like to let everybody know that this podcast is available wherever podcasts are distributed. I mean, Spotify, iTunes, if we're in audio form, wherever they distribute it there, we are there. We are also on YouTube. Please go ahead and subscribe to the pod there as well. Hit that thumbs up button and also hit the notification bell as well as subscribe. So as soon as the newest episode drops, you'll be notified and be able to watch it so uh and go ahead and follow us on our social media pages at lo underscore lightning on twitter as well as locked on underscore lightning on instagram i'm at danky dank on twitter at d-e-n-k-y-d-8-n-k love hearing from all of you and speaking with you uh whether it be through message or 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 you tweet to me or whatever the case may be always happy to interact with all of you so now that ryan mcdonough is gone unfortunately and, and i and i you know it like I said, it's when you've had a guy such as or, or or a person, whether it be not even in sports, you know, at work, you know, if you whenever you've had someone like that, that has been around for five years and, and has really made a big impact on your team's performance, um, it, it's going to take an adjustment period, not only just in terms of ability and, and performance, it's going to it's going to really it's maybe going to throw some guys out of a funk. I, I know Eric Chernak, who was his line partner for quite a while. Uh, I'm sure that's going to be an adjustment period for Eric Chernak as well. Uh, uh, but this, like I said, in the, in the come in the last couple of weeks, uh, whether, you know, the lightning do re-sign Jan Ruda to a new deal, or they decide to go in a different direction. I believe they should go in a different direction. Look within into their pipe system, see what they got in, in Syracuse, maybe bring up a couple of defensemen or so, you know, give them a shot during training camp, see what you got. Um, it, it, it's, you know, it's not a loss because it is a loss. Uh, it's not a loss that anybody should take lightly, uh, but it's going to throw people in a funk. Um, but you know what? Numbers are numbers. This is a business and you got to make a deal to, to sustain the success that this team has had. Uh, so looking at the offseason moves that potentially can happen. Now, one of the moves that I've been talking about, I've spoken about it, whether it be on this show or on 
find, you know, other other shows, whether it be locked on NHL or whether it be crossovers uh, with other shows. Or uh, I spoke about it before when I appeared on the the locked on NHL channel draft recap. Uh, uh, go ahead and look at that. It's on YouTube. Um, talking about all, you know, some of the decisions that the Lightning may or may not have to make this offseason. But the one move, the one move that ever since the bubble and ever since the NHL announced that the cap wasn't really going to grow as much as everybody projected or wished it would have before COVID, uh, the one move that I looked at, at least uh, here and there, um, that I really wish would have been made sooner rather than later uh, is Alex Kalorn. He's 32 years old, uh, played 23, uh, excuse me, played 82 games this past season, 25 goals and 50 points, uh, 59 points, excuse me. And, and really, I really thought Tampa when, when there was conversation a couple of years ago, uh, I believe it was after the bubble or, or, I, I don't remember when it, it was, I believe it was after the bubble when the discussion was had, um, or I believe, no, it might've been last off season. I believe uh, the, the conversation was had that, um, you know, Tyler Johnson was one of the guys that was being moved. Um, Alex Kalorn was one of the names that was floating out there and, and, Unfortunately, and, and I spoke about this on, I believe, last episode of the episode before, that I think if the Lightning were going to go back to the expanded draft, expansion draft at last offseason, I think they would have protected Yanni over over Alex Kalorn. Uh, just because if you look at what Kalorn has done over the past couple of seasons, uh, going all the way back from at least from when this show started, so the the season of 2020, 2019 to 2020 up until present day. Um, you know, you kind of saw the numbers a little bit along the same lines back in 2019, 2020, uh, as you saw this season. The only difference really with that was that 10, 10 less in the points section, 49 in 2019, 20, uh, whereas opposed, like I said, 59 this past season. Uh, 26 goals. That was a career high for him. And then, and I think that was part of the reasoning. Uh, getting 26 goals in 68 games played uh, was very impressive. And especially that paired with the fact that it was a career high for Killer. Uh, I think the Lightning really thought there was a lot of potential for him to, to duplicate that in, in the next season, uh, especially with the, the low frequency of games, 56 every other day. Uh, we all know what happened that season. Uh, but unfortunately, Killer's numbers kind of took a dip. And one can make the case that was because of the frequency of the schedule. I believe he had certain stints, if I'm not mistaken, uh, where he missed some time due to injury. But I, I, I think that really the Lightning missed their window. And, and I really don't mean to sound insensitive about the whole situation, but I always felt like with Alex Kalorn and you saw a lot more this season that there was instances with him where, um, and you saw it in the playoffs as well. I, uh, his inability to get on the stat sheet in the goal section, at least was, was really no pun intended. It, it killed Tampa during certain stretches and, and in certain games, especially. And, and really, I, I, I think that really Tampa fell in love with him hitting that 26 goal mark. And then, kind of was hoping that he was going to turn things around and maybe even capitalize and, and almost double. And what I mean by that, not exactly double that he was going to get 50 goals. No, absolutely not this year. But what I meant, maybe maybe Tampa was thinking, all right, maybe he'll get 30, 30 and 70, which I think is a good number for him. Um, and I, and it, it was I, it was clearly a, a number that he could clearly get to. Um, but unfortunately he didn't do that. And, and now we're stuck in this situation where you saw it at, down the line uh, late in the season. And then you saw it, especially more, more apparent in the playoffs. Uh, you're starting to see the, the digression in his performance. And, and really that's why I think that the lightning missed their window 
in moving him um or at least you know at least getting his getting his money off the books now i know thinking about it now uh the cost of keeping yanni gord probably would have been a lot higher than keeping alex Kalorn. but then at least you would have given yourself a little bit of options there because you know, I'm. I don't want to play the what if game here, but you know, if if you kept Yanni and, and not even thinking about salary cap in this conversation, you keep Yanni. You still have to replace the third line somehow. Uh, if you get rid of Kalorn, I mean, you could you could you could move uh, you could move Yanni up to the second line if you really wanted to there. Uh, or you could even move Ross. I thought, you know, Ross took a huge, Ross Colton took a huge step this year in his progression, maybe put him on that third line as we eventually did see him do anyway. Uh, but I think having a third line, at least, you know, if you were to keep Yanni on the third line, you pair him up with Paul and Colton, or if you move Yanni up to the second to replace Kalorn on the wing, listen, you still have the Colton, Paul, and Perry line. Now I'm I'm talking about all of this without even discussing, you know, the, how the numbers possibly would have worked. But um, I I think at least you know in my opinion, and some of you might call me crazy, and if you do, please go ahead, be respectful, but comment below. Let me know what you think. Um, in my opinion, with with Colin's style of play, what we've seen is he doesn't take a lot of shots outside of of the low slot area. Uh, he's more of a deflection guy, more of a traffic guy up in front on the doorstep kind of guy. And and that is a very, for me, that is a very slippery slope style of play because you could get a guy like Corey Perry who is, who is a veteran. But the other thing with Perry is that, yes, he could score from down low, but he could also score from many other places on the ice. And that's that is a trait that we d- don't really see from Alex Kalorn consistently. And I think that's where Kalorn falters in that respect. I still think he's a valuable member of the team. Uh, my only other issue with him is that he does take not so good penalties at not so good at times. And that does hurt the team. Uh, but I, I, I think that really now fast forward into this off season, I really think the lightning are in a, a really tough spot to where, you know, I saw some people in the comments section um, saying, oh, we could get a third or, or possibly a fourth. And, and I, I quite frankly, right now, especially with what teams are doing and way and the way the NHL landscape is in terms of where teams are looking, a lot of teams obviously are what they're doing. And we've seen it the last couple of years with Tampa winning is that, Teams are going to copy the winning recipe of the best team in the NHL. Teams are starting to get faster. They're starting to get more physical. uh, But speed is definitely a big component of that. And now, especially when you go from a team such as the Lightning that was fast, that blew everybody away in 2019, still did it in 2020. And then you start to see other teams catch on. But the good thing about that Lightning team was that they were able to adjust that, and that's why they were such a dynamic team, especially that third line with Coleman, Goodrow, and Gord. But now this year, you're start, you are you take that, and, and we've spoken on episodes after the Stanley Cup final, uh, all the, the variables and, and the, the reasons why the Lightning faltered. But now you look at a team like Colorado, who is way faster than Tampa, you, you take what Tampa did and Colorado basically did it better. And, and now teams are going to look at Colorado and say, all right, how can we duplicate that? And if I'm a GM of a team that is legitimately serious about not only making a deep Stanley Cup playoff run, but really serious about going to the Stanley Cup final and winning it, Alex Kalorn isn't on my radar. So what I am saying, this hurts and possibly might help the Lightning, but I think in the end, it hurts them because you're not going to get a team that is going to be desperate enough to give you, especially a third round, third round, 
you're not going to get a team that is desperate enough unless they have a season ending injury to one of their centermen or one of their wing guys that they, that plays a similar game. You're not going to get, and especially if the lightning are, are in the mix of it at that point, the trade deadline, if the lightning are having a good season, which we all fully expect them to have, they're not going to trade Alex Kalorn, which is why I think this deal, if the lightning are going to make a deal what they need to make a deal, because then if you keep Kalorn, then you can't keep Palat. Uh, just the math doesn't add up. And then you can't re-sign Ruta, which I feel like Tampa really wants to re-sign Ruta. You can't keep all three guys. And, and I think Kalorn in the end is the odd man out. And I just feel the longer Tampa waits to make a deal for Killer, the they won't be as far off or they won't get back as much as they would like to, which is why... I think the Lightning, if they're waiting for some really good deal where they get a third or or an early fourth, I, I, I'm i sorry, I don't think it's coming, which is why I would be calling up teams, and I'm sure Julian Bruce Boss is doing this, but I would be calling up teams or, or spreading the word throughout the GM meetings or hangouts or around the water cooler up in Montreal at the draft and letting it be known, hey, I got Alex Kalorn here for four, four and a half, um, willing to take a, f- a mid fifth, early fifth, maybe a late fourth. If anyone's got a spare, a couple of those, um, or even a, a late fourth and a, and a, and an early sixth. I, I just think that beggars can't be choosers right now. And unfortunately, regardless, unless a, a deal completely falls, into their lap that is really going to blow everyone out of the water. Uh, the lightning need to settle. Uh, and, and, you know, we'll keep an eye on this situation going forward. I don't think, honestly, I feel like if we haven't heard anything now in terms of a deal getting done, uh, especially by the, by the weekend, I'd be shocked. Um, we, this might carry over into late July, early August. So we'll keep an eye on that going forward. And of course, we'll also be keeping an eye as a lightning look to kind of assemble some pieces, whether it be faces that we already know or names that we haven't heard of before. We'll keep an eye on that as the off season continues here on locked on lightning. So the lightning for the first time, at least for the first time since we had this show, uh, we locked on lightning came into existence during the 2019, 2020 uh, season. So February of 2020, one month right before COVID hit. And here on Locked on Lightning, we've never had a first round draft pick. <laughs> and, and so it was it was kind of weird to see the Lightning in the mix of it, in the in the mix for, for a first round draft pick. And first of all, my initial reaction just from the draft itself was just I was pretty shocked that Shane Shane Wright fell as far as he did. And you know, what I mean is that it's not like we saw for my football fans out there. It's not like we saw a Brady Quinn situation where he almost fell to the end of the draft. But going from projected first to to the fourth, uh, especially I believe it was Arizona was in very much need of a center, which I don't know. I, I'm not going to assume. I'm not, I'm not even going to speculate if there is or isn't any, you know, under the table issues with Shane Wright because it's listen he's not in a lightning uniform so I'm not going to even try and speculate or guess as to what could possibly going on that could have made maybe there was something that the scouts did see in the combine from him that just they just didn't like and the Kraken were looking to grab a big name at the time which you know could very well be the thing but lightning going into this draft and and i think a lot of people whether you're me whether you're a casual fan or whether you're a diehard uh you kind of could feel at least especially if you're a diehard and you've been following this team for the last couple of years they need a forward they 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 need to bolster they need to start building up their farm system their pipeline uh that's just the name of the game at this point uh being at the top of the NHL for a number of years, it's going to deplete your 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 stock in the minors, especially when you're trading some of those guys away. Uh, we saw the the 
the trade trade away. I believe it was Blake Coleman in the Blake Coleman trade. Lightning traded away Nolan Foot, who, who at the time was their number one prospect, uh, Cal Foot's brother. Uh, and then you you trade away uh, two two top line guys uh, for Brandon Hagel during the regular season. So there's an, another couple of young young guys there gone from the pipeline, uh, and, and you start to see some of the guys that were young at that point in time, and even some of your guys that were at the NHL level. Matthew Joseph, he's gone for Nick Paul. Uh, you know, uh, Alex Barre Boulet, he's going to be on the team this year. Hopefully I've been screaming for him to get his chance all season long. Uh, thank, thankfully the lightning picked him back up on waivers, but the lightning selected tonight with the 31st overall pick Isaac Howard from the U S developmental team. And I heard his name. It, it seemed like he was one of the guys that was that the lightning, it seemed really really liked from day one and and in my opinion you know i'm not really big on the draft in terms of really knowing a lot of these guys and and we'll as once the lightning i have finalized all their picks for the nhl draft we'll have some experts on uh scouts well draft experts at least uh get on here and they'll give their two cents but um just from what i've heard just from what i've read uh just from the highlights that i've seen of him from his time played, um, he's a bona fide scorer. Uh, and, and even if you don't have an eye for that, even if you don't look at the highlights, look at his numbers from this past season. 60 games played, 33 goals scored, 82 total points. Uh, and that was split between juniors and, and the national team. But if you look at his total stats, his total stats, uh, 82 points, uh, and, and that actually was the the team lead in points over Logan Cooley, Frank Nazar, Rutger McGrody, Cutter Gother, guys that were all drafted ahead of him. And just based off of that, it seems like the Lightning once again, Julian Brees Boss, whether his lucky rabbit foot, whatever he rubbed, uh, did it again, pulled some magic, did a fantastic job. And, and to even put it more in perspective, Isaac Howard has the second most average points per game behind Logan Cooley, who was a top five draft pick. So that shows you how, what kind of potential this kid has. Uh, he's a little undersized for my, my taste. He's 5'10". Um, He's 181 pounds. I'm not worried about the weight. He's going to put on a couple more pounds, whether it be, I would probably say 14 pounds. 195 for me would be probably a good happy medium. 190 if he puts on nine uh, would be good. Left-handed shot. Uh, he's going to play on the wing. And his favorite player is Cooch. So that that's a, that's an added. Um, in, in the, in the uh, draft, rankings by tsn he was number 20 uh uh for draft prospects hockey he was ranked at number 18 for Sportsnet. he was ranked number 12 and and that shows that you know a lot of people it seemed as though you know missed out on this guy it, and and you could see it in the early drafts and, and julian breeze boss took it very took advantage of this he saw he saw a guy who could clearly score and that's what the Lightning need. They're gonna and they're gonna love having this guy on an entry level contract in the coming years. Uh, from what I heard uh, from some people that are in the know about you know this guy who have seen him play a lot more than I have, uh, it seems like we're not gonna have to wait long for 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 Isaac Howard uh, in the NHL. He is commuted to Minis He is committed to Minnesota Duluth, so he'll probably play a couple of seasons there just to get bigger, just to get fine-tune his game. I would imagine we'll probably see him maybe after his junior year uh, when he's 21 years old. So, you know, he's going to have that added experience. He's going to be bigger by then. Remember these kids, a lot of people, some, a lot of, some, some people actually make a big deal about, well, you know, this kid's 18 years old, but he's small. He's, you know, he's talented, but he's small. It's like, listen, he's 18. He's still growing. A lot of people forget that. Uh, and, and, like I like I was gonna say what I was about to say with 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 Julian Bruce Boss taking advantage. Uh, this was it, it. They didn't say it on ESPN. They actually said the opposite. But if you look at the draft pick selections, 
off the top of my head, I don't really know, but I felt like this was a very defenseman, uh, defenseman heavy draft. Uh, it seemed as though a lot of teams were placing an emphasis on drafting defensemen, to solidifying, and, and it, it was it was a mix of the good teams and, and the not so good teams. Uh, there was there was a lot of there was a lot of wingers drafted, a lot of foreign wingers. Um, so that also helped the lightning that a lot of teams weren't really looking, especially the North American teams. They really, really weren't looking at the continent inside the continent as a source of talent. Um, and then outside of his playing ability, uh, if you, if you didn't watch the draft last night, if you haven't seen anything about this kid, uh, go look at the videos. I was, I was on the, the lock on NHL draft show right after they made the pick. And I, and I even said it to uh, lock on Florida Panthers host Armando Velez. This kid looks like he he looked like he was Don Johnson from Miami Vice. Love the turtleneck, love the white jacket. The kid uh, has a ton of confidence. It doesn't come off to me at least as cocky, uh, or it's going to be any sort of issue. Uh, he seems like he's got a good head on his shoulders. He's uh, he actually made a comment when he was talking to one of the analysts that. Uh, he was the best looking guy there, so he deserved to be picked. And uh, listen, I love the confidence. I love that paired with the playing ability. Uh, I think he's going to fit in just great with this team when he comes in, whether it be two, three years. I would expect him to be in Tampa uh, in, in three years, so keep an eye out for that. But imagine him playing on the same line as a Ross Colton or a Brandon Hagel or a Nick Paul, especially him and Ross Colton. I think just from what I saw uh, him do, in his highlights, uh, the brief amount of time, and I'll watch more highlights and video on this kid as it goes al- as we go along. But uh, him paired on the same line with Ross Colton, I think that's going to make for a great deadly duo scoring wise. And then you just have maybe a guy like Anthony Sorelli, or or you move you move Ross to the center eventually. Who knows what will happen with this team by then? Or you have Braden Point in the middle, uh, aligned with Point, Colton, and 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 Howard. That's going to be a a pretty dangerous line, I think. Uh, especially with with Cooch on the first line with Stamkos, and and if you know, hopefully they still have Palat by then. Uh, so the the future thus far is looking very bright. Uh, I'm excited for the next few rounds that the Lightning have in tow. Uh, can't wait to see what Julian Brees Boss does, and make sure to tune in as uh, to the YouTube page as well as all our social media pages and on our any of the audio platforms because we'll be providing updates and putting out more episodes. Uh, to discuss the moves being made in the offseason, whether it be in the draft, free agency, or the trade market. So that's been it for this episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Adam Tanker. I'll talk to you on the next one.